Good morning, everybody. How are you today? This lovely Saturday morning, the 6th of February. It's a very weird day out there. The sun is sort of out, but the mist is hanging low. Um, and it's quite damp and chilly. But we're here and we're ready for 45 minutes of something creative. And um, I'm going to show you pen techniques. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Kate. Warm socks and a dog on either side. Well, I've got my warm socks on. I don't have any pets here. Um, but I could do with a dog on my feet. That would be quite nice. I've got my tea. Morning, Susan. Morning, Sue. You're all coffee up. Morning, Janet. Morning, Janet. Morning, Rosemary. Oh, you've got rain. Yes, Kate, you're right. I've had... Um, Morning Dawn. I've uh, I've had a lot of weather alerts on my phone for the last um, couple of days to say that we're, there's heavy chance of snow between here and uh, between today and uh, well tonight and Wednesday. Um, so that'll be interesting. Hopefully we won't get too much and it won't be too bad. Morning Mandy. Uh, morning Carolyn. Hi Patricia. Hello Patricia's daughter. Hello Samantha. Oh, from Northwich. Oh, lovely. How's the weather where you are? Morning, Norma. Morning, Trish. Morning, Sandy. Bonjour. Hi, Rosie. Sunny Sussex. Oh, Diane. Sunny morning on the south coast. How lovely. Morning, Wendy. No, you haven't missed anything yet, Linda. I've only just started waffling. Morning, Emma. Hello, Jenny. It is, isn't it? I love it. I love it because there's 72 of you watching, and um, which is it blows me away because I'm I'm only I'm only a tiny shop. I was going to say I'm only a tiny person. I'm not a tiny person, um, but I'm a tiny shop and a tiny business. Sunny in Northwich. Oh, that's good after the weather you've had lately. I'm I'm pleased that it's decent weather. So we're going to look at morning, Eileen. What home I went? How been Hello, Jan. No snow, no, we've got no snow, but very, very soggy mist here. A couple of bits of blue bits. I, I think it's sky. It's been that long since I've seen any actual blue sky around here. I, I'm not quite sure what it looks like. Morning, Sue. We're, we're representing all parts of the UK today. That's lovely. Um, Lynn, Banbury, hey, down the road from me. About six miles away. From where I'm doing this from today, because I'm not at the shop this morning. I'm at home and I'm in my slippers. Morning, Harsha. Lancashire. From Harsha and Lancashire, lovely. Morning, V. How are you? Um, so we're going to look at pen techniques, and it kind of follows on. Hello, Jill from Devon. What's it like where you are? Morning, Lauren. Hi, Linda. Good, I'm glad. I, I just think the floods were just awful. When I saw images that Northwich Art Shop was sharing a couple of weeks ago last month, awful. Hiya, Cathy. Kogan Ho North Ants. Hello, Diane. Hi, Jane. Great Yarmouth, a murky Great Yarmouth. So I've got my sketch. Now, I have posted the a photograph of this sketch. Um in the uh, event. Morning, Janet. Um, it's, it's quite a miserable time of year, February. But, right, so, a positive thing to hang on to. By the end of this month, sunrise will be at 7am and sunset won't be till 6pm. So we'll have over an hour extra daylight every day um, from the end of this month. Morning, Melanie. Foggy, non eaten. Morning, Jean. Morning, Joe. How oh, lovely. Morning, Jan. Hello, Jan. Hello. Um, so I've got a range of pens. And this kind of follows on from last month's... Uh, morning, Norma. Um, from last month's drawing techniques because it's all about technique things. But I thought I'd show you um, some... Interesting ways to render brick and stone and wood if you're going to do buildings. Because so I've got, I've tried to 
match a few bits up of uh, all sorts of things. So this is kind of... Um, hello, Jilly from Morpeth. Hello. Um, so this is kind of a, a, a mashup of lots of things. It, the window is a real window that I found on a free image search. And then I've just made the rest up to fit in for what I want to do this morning. Waro, Bob, I've been ya. Waro, my mate. So I'm going to be using um, permanent pens today. And I use the Unipin Fine Line range. Now, actually, Rosemary, I've just remembered your comment just from a, a, a minute or two ago. Um, you, if you want to do it live with me, you can. But I, obviously, I'll be just going straight into the demo because I've only got 45 minutes. Or I've posted the reference image, this reference sketch, in case you wanted to do it later. You might find it's less stressful to watch me today and then do it when I shut up later at 12, well, quarter to 12. Um, and then watch the video back because it'll stay in the video section forever. We've we've started moving some of the demos over to our YouTube channel um, and transferring the actual um, informative lessons from our YouTube channel onto our website as well, um, just to give more people the chance to get a bit of free education. Morning, Brenda. I just froze. Let it go, let it go. Am I still frozen? Don't touch the pen anymore. Let me just do a wiggle and a wave. Just so you can see. I'm not frozen on mine. I think it might be your your um, your Wi-Fi. The, the wind's blown in the wrong direction, I think, um, Rosemary. Um, hopefully I'm back. And I'm not frozen. So I use these Unipin pens. They're really affordable. I mean, we sell these, these are our best selling pens in the world um, that we sell on a daily basis. They're waterproof, they're fade proof, and they're pigmented ink. Oh, God, Rose, I'm still going strong. Dear. And um, they come in a wide range, and they've extended their range recently. Um, so the finest they do is 0 0.03, which if I just tweak my camera, I think I can zoom in. Look at that. Oh, hang on. Oh, you'd think I'd be able to do this, wouldn't you know? I've been doing this for long enough. No, doesn't want to zoom in, but it's really fine anyway. It's a really fine 0 0.03 and 0 0.05. This is, oh, uh, hi, Gloria from sunny Spain. How lovely. So this is the Unipin Fine Line Pen. So if you wanted to shop with us, there's no minimum spend. If you want to buy a pen, you can, and we don't charge postage, and we send out first class. So um, it's usually with you within a day. Or less, actually. Sometimes when Jackie posts on, say, like on a Monday morning, um, it's uh, hello, Jilly. Um, it's um, it's there by the following day, which is amazing. That's all right, Rosemary. Don't worry. Um, hi, Kathy. So these are what I use. They're brilliant. So they do a range of blacks from 0 0.03, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 2, 3, and then go up to 0.8 was the standard, and they've extended it to 1 and 1.2 mil now. So you've got quite a range of thicknesses. The tea bags are lovely. Uh, Jackie gets those in. Um, cracking, aren't they? Um, they get a wide range of black, but they have bought out in a 0 0.1 and a 0 0.5 light grey, which I haven't got with me today, dark grey, and sepia. And I'm so pleased because sepia pens are really, really hard to get. There used to be an amazing range. Um, there was It's called the, the Zig Artist Sketching Pen, and that was around for decades. And it, it came just in one thickness in black and in um, sepia. The sepia we would sell out of every time we had it in. Then they decided just to stop making it, which was really frustrating. Because it was so popular. So thankfully, Unipin have stepped in and they've got their own. Because sometimes it depends what you want to create. Because, you know, it's your world, um, as Uncle Bob Ross would say. And, um, well, you happy little bricks. Um, and uh, 
Sometimes black is too harsh for what you want. They're good, aren't they, Rosemary? They're they're under under three quid, I think. Are they? Under under well, three pound twenty, something like that. Um, or two pound thirty. Oh, I have the other way around. Um, but they're really really affordable. Um, and even architects and designers started using those. They moved away from the uh, the really fancy ones. And uh, I I just think they're really great because sometimes black is too harsh. And you want grey or you want brown. Um, and, and that's why they have them. Yeah, the Derwent graphics is nice. Um, Derwent have, have upped their, their, their pen game recently over the last couple of years. Which is really, really good. Because our 87 of you, you've all, you've all crept in at the back, haven't you? Hello, I didn't see you. Welcome along. And um, art has become a lot more portable now. Um, so more and more people are having art on the go. Nobody's really got the time to sit down and paint, which is quite sad. Um, so the whole range of... Um, you can buy these pens from my shop. So if you go to our website, theartryonline.com, I haven't been putting any links today um, because we've we've really um, struggled with spammers. But if you notice, Rosemary, there are no spammers today because I changed the title of the event. I didn't put the word free in it. And I think it's their spam bots latch on to certain phrases and then dump a load of uh, spam links in. So, so far, nothing's happened. So there's no, I'm not going to use the word free. Um, what sizes do I recommend for a beginner? Um, probably a 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Because, I mean, they, they come, like brushes, they come... 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8. But to be honest, do you really need all those into in between ones when you're starting out? Probably not, to be honest, Trish. Um, so just get, or just get a two, four, six, and eight. Um, so yeah, if you head to our website, theartronline.com, go to the online shop on the on the top, and it will be there. Um, I think I can. Um, da -da 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 -da. I haven't been posting links, you see, because of the spammers, because um, some of them want are asking for money and stuff, and we, we'd never do that on our free lessons. Um, so if you head to our website, along the top is um, online shop. Go there, type in uni pin or liner pen or something like that. Um, if I can find the link, um, I will pop that in. If Jackie, if you're watching, if you can do it any quicker than me, that would be great. Um, let me see, because I've upgraded the shop appy site, and uh, it's much, 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 much easier to um, to do. Let me just have. I'll just stop for a second. Da -da -da, da -da -da. I don't think they're out of stock again because we've got loads in. Ah, right, I found it. I will post the link. So no minimum spend. No postal charge. 94 of you, wowzers. So there's the link for the Unipin pens. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll ramp up the stock. They do brush pens as well in the black, brown, and grey. So I'm probably going to start with a 0 0.1. Now that's a 1.0. Oh, pick the wrong one up. That's a 1.0, not a 0.1. I'll start with a 0.2 because that's to hand. <clears throat> so I'll show you different techniques. So we've got stone, we've got brick, we've got glass, we've got wood, and we've got all sorts of things on there. I think I think it has worked, Rosemary. I think um, I think I'm onto something now. I, I realised that as soon as they were, I thought they were real people originally, but they were coming so frequently in 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 the bucket loads that I realised that um, that it must be a bot. Um, yes, but they only do the one size brush pen. Um, I if you look through the videos section later, um, Laura Lauren. Um, 
I did a, a brush pen calligraphy free class at the end of January and I was talking about them. They only do this one size and it is water and fade proof and pigment ink um, and it's fine enough to do normal handwriting size brush pen work with. Very flexible nib. Cracking, cracking kit. In fact, I've got um, Sassy, Sassy Steve is a local caricaturist and he um, he uses them all the time. Morning, Monique. Um, he uses them all the time for his uh, caricatures. He buys them by the, book, b the box load uh, from us, which is absolutely wonderful. So when you do a demo, I ought to actually put some pen to paper, hadn't I, do you know? I waffle on. We have such a lovely chat in the morning, don't we? Then I forget that I'm not doing a radio show and I'm actually supposed to do an art lesson with you. Um, but I enjoy chatting to you. So I've got my point two. Now, if you want hard lines, soft lines, all of that kind of thing, you do need to think about it. And, and a lot of the pen techniques are very similar to the pencil techniques. You've got hatching, cross-hatching, pointillism, um, and feathering, bracelet shading, directional shading, because you, you can't get rid of a line in a pen, because the whole point is having the pen, isn't it, and the line. So you want to make it work for you. So for sort of stone areas, I will do more dots. For hard lines, I will do... Um, A radio show. Oh, Sue, don't. Yeah, in my spare time, I'll do a radio show. Can you imagine? What would I? What would I call it? Oh, don't suggest. Don't suggest any names now, because we'll be. We'll go off on a tangent, and we'll never. I'll. The pen will never see the paper. Um. So for hard lines, I will do straight lines, but other times I will use um sort of masking with other sheets of paper if I want an edge without a hard edge and I will be doing that with this so I'll just pinpoint a few things now I'm on mop the pad I'm using is the one I often use for my demos and it's the sea white recycled cup cycled paper and it's multi mixed media cartridge paper it's 140 grams in weight and um, it's actually made from recycled cups and it's the there's only one place in the whole of the UK that make these and what they do is they found a way in a machine of taking the plastic lining out of a paper cup and they then recycle the paper cups and make paper out of it yes they do uh, Gloria um, I use them all the time on acrylics in fact let me just um because we're talking about pens so I can go into this um, I've just finished this painting and um, you can see here I've used the black liner pen on top of um, on top of acrylics and then varnished it it's perfect perfect for that So I use them. I use them for signing watercolors. I use them on acrylic paints. Um, I use them with Posca pens. I use them for illustrations. I use them for drawing. Um, they they really they really versatile pen. The Uni pin. Um, they're cracking. If you do order them this morning um, and it shows up as out of stock, I will. I know we've got at least eight to eight eight of each pen in each size. So. If it shows up as out of stock. Oh, oh, you want to see that painting? Okay, hang on. <clears throat> it's a three hair Triskelion. So we've got um, the Triskelion in the centre. Uh, well, the, the, the Triquetra in the centre. The three hair Triskelion. Um, the representation of sky, land and water. Uh, we've got the phases of the moon. The 12 signs of the zodiac as star constellations and the Wiccan symbols of the seasons around the edge. Quite a big one. Um, but yes, I use the pen on that. Oh, thank you, Eileen. Um, I'm, I'm into round canvas panels at the moment. I've just finished another one, which I'll be posting on my own Facebook in a week, I think. Um, <clears throat> and it's a big full moon with two boxing hairs in silhouette. Anyway, oh, dear. See, I haven't, still haven't. It's painted on a circular canvas panel, um, Sue. 
I don't think I've got them on Shop Happy because we sell them out as, as fast as we can get them in. There's only one company that we deal with out of about eight that do circular boards. So if I want to do stonework, I'll just build up dots. No hard edges. Now I'm going to have the light from the left. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Jill. So I'm going to concentrate my dots. You know, the only downside of working in pen, thank you, Janet, is you have to draw it all out first. Because there's no going back if you don't. You can't rub your pen out. And this would work if I was doing this on watercolour paper. In fact, this is 140 GSM, so I could do light wash of watercolour. Um, if I really let it dry, I can do the pen first and then put watercolour on top, um, which is wonderful. So we'll do some stonework, we'll do some brickwork, I'll work on the windows. I'll try and get us uh, lots of little bits. Ah, oh, well, there we go, Brenda. I'm, I'm sort of revisiting my childhood of uh, gnomes and fairies and magic and crystals at the moment in my work. Lots of moon gazing hairs, lots of triquetras, lots of um, boxing hairs. All that kind of thing. I did do one before that. Um, this one, these are waterproof. Yeah, so they're waterproof, they're fade proof and they're pigmented ink. So they're light fast. So they shouldn't fade. So you can see I'm sort of building up more on the left, uh, sorry, on the right and lower sides of each stone. Let me zoom in on this because I can do that. I've... Um, in fact, I was watching a, 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 an artist a while ago and, and she was saying, I can't remember her name, I'm afraid, because uh, it was just a random thing on Instagram. And she was saying it's really good as an artist to look at your body of work. Now, it's very difficult for me because I teach 30 to 40 classes a month. I have 30 to 40 paintings a month, but they're not the bo my body of work because they're tutorial pieces. I've... I have a very small body of work um, that I paint just for me that is not commission, that is not anything. And I went back and I found um, nine paintings. And um, over the last, well, since 2017. So n only nine. Um, some of which are from series of five or six paintings. So obviously, you know, I just picked the main ones from that. And um, I found it's all hairs, moons, woods, um, Celtic symbology, Symb symbology, symbolism. I like symbology. I'm going to say symbology, Celtic symbolism uh, and all of that kind of thing. So it's it's sort of a gnomes. Um, I, I love a gnome. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating. And I hadn't really noticed that it was stemming back that far. Um, over the last four or five years that I've been doing all of this imagery and um, mythical, magical stuff. So it, it's interesting. That's all right, Rosary. Nice to have you join me. Um, and I'm sure you'll, you'll join in later. So thank you very much. So we're doing a bit of texture here. You want to leave quite a lot of white, especially if you're... Um, If you're going to wash with watercolour over the top, you don't want to smother it with pen. So it's quite an arduous process. Now, there are some brands that have bought out pneumatic pens. Don't get me started on that. Battery-operated pen, it does like 50 dots a second or something like that. Now, to me, when I do pointillism, I enjoy the process. My students, you, you've heard me rant about this plenty of times. I'm all for making life easier, but I'm not really happy about ruining the process. 
in the process. So can you see how the stones have got texture and they're slightly th more three-dimensional because of... Hello, Mary. Because um, they're slightly... The sun's out now. I love it. See, as soon as you say hello, Mary, the sun comes out. And how wonderful is that? You brought the sun with you. Thank you. Um, can you see how more three-dimensional these stones look against the flattened bricks? Because they're... Um, they're dotty and the weight of the, the 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 ink is on the left sorry the light is coming from the left the a majority of the ink is on the right and the underside you know you all know how rubbish I am with my lefts and my rights in fact that's how I failed my first driving test um that's another story I was in Gornal Eileen I was my driving test in Gornal blimey nightmare 1999 so i'm going to do a brick and i'm doing it wonkily so not dotty but shaky and i'm just going over the right hand side and the left hand side now the bricks have got a slightly more formal texture so I'll just do a few dots. Now, although this is a point two, if I press down hard, I will probably get a deeper line. If I do a very light dot, I will get, to, if I go quickly, I will get finer lines. And really finer dots, just to get some sort of texture in there, because these are old bricks. And old stones. This is like a proper old feel. I'll I'll switch to a different colour uh, pen later, so you can see the differences in how they look. Because as you know, these demos, I want to give you as much information as possible. I'm not the sort of person that would just like go step one, blank piece of paper. Ah, yeah. Basically, if I was going to do a um, a building further away and I wasn't doing a demonstration on pen for buildings, I would just do a selection of bricks. Because if the more bricks you put on, the more detailed it becomes. And what will happen is if it's a diff if it's a distant building, Oh, no, I haven't got it on uh, a card yet, Janet, but I will be soon. Absolutely. Um, so if it's a distant building and you put too many bricks on it, it brings it forward. So it's no longer in the distance. So what, what you have to be careful of, you, you have to judge for yourself how much detail you want to put in. But yeah, if I was doing a watercolour of a building in the distance, um, I would do just... Um, a few of the more dominant stones or bricks in it randomly throughout the scene. So hopefully you can see the difference in the, in the textures here. And, and all it is, is the difference with how I'm using the pen. We'll move over to the window. Do you know what? I was going to spend ages trying to move the camera. <laughs> and then I realised I could just move my pad. <laughs> oh dear, it's early. It's not actually that early. What am I talking about? I'm trying to make excuses for myself. So I don't want... If I was doing a brand new brick, I would make sure my lines were not wobbly. So maybe, maybe there's a brand new brick had to be put in here. Um, a bit further down, I've got um, I've got a piece where a stone's been taken out. So if I was to do a brand new brick, So if I was going to do a watercolour wash over that, I would... Um, oh, I forgot where my hand was then, because I'm trying to look at the screen. Um, 
I would do those bricks in a slightly more orange maybe colour and the others in a little bit more of red. So since we're there, let's do our stones above. Will I ever get round to finishing this picture? I don't know. Um, it depends very much on my time uh, that I've got. I don't have a lot of spare time. I have more spare time now than ever, but um, it doesn't feel like it because I'm constantly updating the website or uh, planning paintings. and There's just loads of things that I'm trying to do to, to sort of pass the time. So I could do this, but I have got commissions that I've got to um, get on to. As much as I enjoy just faffing around with a bit of pen. Hello, Beth. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so if you go to the video section on the on our main shop page that you're watching from now, um, we've got hundreds of videos uh, for acrylics, drawing, oils, pastels, um, landscapes, colour mixing. We've got loads of different uh, tutorials on there. We've also got some speed paintings on our YouTube channel. Um... I'm just very, I love what I do and I really want the techniques to be passed on and that's why our whole aim at the Artery has been to make art accessible and as affordable as possible. Um, obviously I'd love to do free classes all the time but because we're a small business that consists of, of me and Jackie, Jackie works part time for me. Um, Obviously, we need to pay bills and eat. Otherwise, I do free classes and free lessons all the time. Um, if we if we were government funded or something, then that's what I'd do. Um, but I haven't changed since I used to work in primary education. So doing it dotily or randomly, shaky, gives you that idea of um, looseness. Um, do you know what, Lauren? The majority of my commissions, and I never thought that it would be the case, because I paint landscapes. I love landscapes, and I love trees, and I love mountains, and I love dramatic skies, and I try to incorporate as many of those in the classes as possible. But most of my commissions are pet portraits, um, animal portraits. So I do dogs and cats and horses and all those kind of things. Sometimes on a wooden panel, sometimes on a grey board. I haven't got any I can show you to hand because they're... Yes, Sue, do you reckon? I found out yesterday that a lot of my students... Um, I, ha I had a student that was recovering from their COVID jab and they weren't feeling too great. So we just chatted about everything. I sang a little bit and um, <laughs> waffled. Hello, Melanie. Um, I waffled for so many different things. Um, but, you know, I absolutely love painting animals now. Oh, I think I did one. Um, because I work in gouache. Um, I work in um, gouache for the animal portraits, and um, I did a demo on, and it it's on the shop page. I did a little duckling in gouache, so that might uh, that'll be on the shop video section. Gosh, look at the time. I'm supposed to have finished the demo in, in 15 minutes and I've, I've only just started because I've been... Well, I've been teaching. I've been demonstrating, haven't I? It's not like I've just been putting my feet up because then you'd see me slippers. I've drunk all my tea as well now. Right, so we want this window ledge... It's a window where I'm from, so I have to try and speak properly. This window ledge. Yes, you do, Bethany. Um, you do. You um, you make sure that. So I won't rub any pencil lines out. If I make any mistakes in my drawing, I'll I'll often leave them in. Uh, because I can, 
um, I can sort it out with the pen. So I'll do the pen and then I'll um, I'll rub it out afterwards because it's a permanent waterproof ink. Um, so I want a little bit of um, shadow underneath this because this is a ledge. Um, so I'm going to do just a little bit of hatching. So hatching is diagonal lines. If you ever used to read the old Rupert annuals, it was all done with um, pen work and watercolour washes. I've got a few of my brothers because he's, he's a lot older than me. I'm still only a baby. I have to drop it in occasionally. It's the only thing I've got going for me. It's the youth and that's, and that's <laughs> fading away. <laughs> Uh, oh, thank you, Jean. Um, do you know, Jean, that was actually a class that we did. Um, I was doing a watercolour portrait class. Now, <clears throat> we repeat the classes um, three times over a 10-week period. And uh, the the first class was on the Thursday afternoon, and we did um, Mel Gibson because the theme of the class was watercolour portraits, but I wanted to show techniques for uh, wrinkles and teeth. And Mel Gibson has those both of those quite plentiful and um, we all did a wonderful lesson but then over the Sunday before the Monday evenings watercolour class of portraits where I was going to do Mel Gibson um, uh, Captain Tom was very very poorly so I thought I said to myself and I, I said to Jackie do you know what I think I'm going to change the portrait this evening and we did um, a portrait of uh, Captain Tom um, as a way of wishing him well. Um, it is, um, Yolanda, it will stay on... Um, it will stay on our videos section in this page forever and I will probably move it over to our YouTube section as our YouTube page and our website. Um, on our website, I have added a new page called Free Learning Zone and that's where you'll find all of these... Um, well, not all of them yet, because it's taken me ages. It takes longer to upload a lesson than it does to teach it. Um, but that's where you'll find all of these um, lessons and tutorials. But on our Facebook page, page there's oh, I don't know. We've been doing, we've been doing a free, um, a free monthly demo live on Facebook every month for four years now, um, and all of the videos are on there. Some of them are a bit ropey. The um, we've gradually increased our technical abilities over that period of time um, and we've gone a bit fanciful with with like a logo and um, music and all of that before that I was just filming it from my iPhone um, so uh, it's they're a bit dodgy the original earlier versions but they're still informative and um, they were filmed in front of a live studio audience because um, back in the days when we could actually breathe the same air as each other, um, the classroom was open for our free demonstrations. And we used to have people joining in and sitting in and chatting to me live. So you'll hear voices on those. Whereas with um, all of the ones in the last 18 months, well, 10 months, um, have just been me talking to you, which is wonderful. How many of you are here? Let's have a look. Oh, it's not showing me how many are here. How about, oh, 97 of you. Oh, how lovely. Thank you so much for, for sharing Saturday morning with me. Your coffee will have gone cold. Are you sipping it all right? Because I do worry. So can you see how the textures are building up and we've got that... Um, um, it's a class, Linda. Um, it's the Monday evening watercolour class that's £5. Um, so if you wanted to, you could sign up, you could book that lesson. It's just under watercolour portrait and um, you could do the lesson. It's a full two-hour class. Everybody did a cracking job, I have to say, but that's in one of our private groups. It wasn't as a demonstration, it was one of our classes. Trying to do as much as I can in the time. I'm supposed to only have four to five minutes left, according to me. Who is it that sets these up, eh? Oh, 
Right, I'm going to show you as much as I can about everything that I wanted to, to comment on. I've done bricks, I've done stone. So yeah, Monday, Monday evening watercolours, and it just says portrait, um, I think, as the booking. And then in the group, it, it talks about Captain Tom as a... Where have I put that piece of paper? There it is. Right. I'll sh I'm just going to get a slightly thicker pen, probably a 0.4. Um, and I've just got a blank piece of printer paper. Well, it's not. It's um, one left over from reference photograph. I'm doing the window pane now, Lauren. How about that? We're psychically uh, linked. So what I want to do is the window frame is white. Um, it was a 7 till 9 p.m. class, but you can watch it whenever you like. Uh, you can watch them on catch up. So um, we, we stream our classes live, but then when they're live afterwards, they stay as a video within the private groups. So uh, for five pounds, you can watch it on catch up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the paper on the edge of the um, inside edge of the window pane. And like that, pivot the window round, the window round, the paper round. I never had a paper round. It's not that we were too posh or anything. I didn't want one. Can you see how that works? So I've got a nice straight edge without it being a solid line. Just bring that round there. And it makes it slightly reflective as well. So it will be more subtle, just like me. I will do, because the light is coming from the left, <coughs> I will do just a little bit of a more of a, a solid semi-broken line, top and bottom. And I'll do the same with a few others, because I know a lot of you lot don't mind if I go over a, a few minutes. I was going to say I'd like to give you your money's worth, but this is free. And I still give you your money's worth. Well, you know, doing this, I did... Um, now, also, on the video section, um, I think it'll, it'll make its way to our website's learning zone as well, but in the video section on this page, I did, years ago a pen and wash lesson on painting a snowy building. And in fact, I think I did it uh, as a demo before Christmas. Uh, I did a log cabin in pen and wash and I used this technique to get the snowy roof line to save um, outlining it all really heavily. So can you see how that just gives a nice, um, everything's easy when you know how, Mandy, isn't it? And a lot of these techniques, I, I, I can't claim credit for any of them. I mean, they've been around for centuries, but I've had to learn how to use them myself. Because um, sadly, although I studied art, I wasn't really taught much. And I think that's what spurred me on to um, teach art myself. Um, nothing, nothing against um, my college tutors. The the era I was learning was in the night, the late nineties, and everything was all about computers. And I didn't want to learn about computers. I wanted to learn traditional methods, and it just wasn't in the curriculum. So after I left, I um, did my own thing really one thing i don't like is straight lines and and the reason i don't like them is because i can't do them 
hence the uh, hence the pad yeah exactly for window or glass it just gives it that extra little bit of something if you wanted to if you if if you were going to um do more stuff i've got the light gray pen here so i'll show you a window pane using that oh this is the point one i think i should go with the point five actually because that was a point four wasn't it as i say in these uh, they do light gray dark gray this is the dark gray it's a brownie gray oh that's fluff on that a bit of fluff also permanent also light fast also waterproof So you won't notice a huge difference because it is the dark grey. But you may find it just looks a little bit more subtle. slightly more subtle with the glass <clears throat> are there any other bits of techniques you want me to to go through um let me do where have i put that pen there it is there's the point two i'll just do the the little bricks above the window um itself i'll just do a couple because you really want to, because the light is coming from the left, you want to emphasise the right and the lower parts. Because that's what's going to bring it forward. Now these will come forward. No, it doesn't damage the nib for dots. And the reason why is because you don't put the pressure on. Yes, I'll do the slate and I'll do the wood as well. Um... You don't put pressure on when you do the dots. I'm not heavy-handed. I'm probably more heavy-handed than I think I am. Um, but if you want a big dot, you just use the bigger pen. Oh, I'll use the sepia. I'll use the sepia for the wood on the door. How about that? Um, so if I want a big dot, I'll use a bigger, bigger pen. Um, so I won't be having to press down as hard, you know. Um, I mean, if, if, if I just bend the microphone right to the paper, here's the microphone, you can hardly hear that, can you? So I'm not, I'm not pressing down hard at all with that. And again... This is going to be a little bit of hatching. So hatching is when you go in one direction. Cross hatching, like I did in the in the pencil demo the other day, is when you go in the other direction or directions to make it a, a more concentrated area. So this is going to look a little bit odd because it's going to have... Um, Lots of bits of stuff all over the place. Random. But that's what it's about. It's a demo, isn't it? It's a demo. Isn't it? It's a demo. Oh, Lynn, bless you. Thank you. That's really... Where are you from, Lynn? You'll find this is extremely therapeutic. If you do this, um, even if you you don't share it with any other person that will ever see what you do, you'll find that doing brickwork or stones is so therapeutic because it's very repetitious. Um, you, you're doing a lot of the same thing. So in terms of mindfulness, which a lot of our classes help with anyway, 
um, my black country dulcet tones um, and my r regular moaning distracts everybody and um, puts you all to sleep. Um, doesn't it, Sue? I'm only doing more on this side because of the wood. Um, I'm using just cartridge paper, Yolanda. Uh, it's fine. Um, I'm using cup cycled paper, which is a recycled um, paper cups. And um, it's brilliant. So what I'm going to do, I will do, th I'm doing these bricks here because the light is coming from the left. So there's going to be, um, I'm going to go in with the grouting. Well, not the grouting. Oh, my dad would tell me off he was a builder. The compo, as he'd call it. And I'm just going to use the black to add a little bit of shadow. He was an amazing builder, my dad. Sadly, I know how to do it. But uh, he passed away when I was a, when I was uh, in my late teens, at the time where I didn't want to listen to a thing he told me, and uh, I regret that because I I could have learned so much. He was brilliant at woodwork. He was amazing at DIY. Um, but you know, at nineteen, and he'd been ill for quite a long time. You don't really. Um, want to know do you I didn't anyway I'm doing bits of wood here um, just just because of time it's already five minutes I might stay till 12 o'clock so this is still the two the point two but because I'm working quickly would it be ah uh, he was he was a, a, a proper black country bloke um kathy um he, he wasn't he didn't show emotion in hugs and what have you but he'd do anything for you absolutely he he would spend we were very poor we didn't really have any money but he really supported he and my mum my mum was very crafty she passed away four years ago um and uh uh, they were very supportive. My mum did a lot of art and crafts. A very crafty lady, my mother. And um, they would drive everywhere. If I had exhibitions and shows, they would um, support me with picture framing um, and all of that for exhibitions when I was 14, 15. Um, no, my parents were absolutely wonderful. I had, in terms of being an artist... Um, it was the best upbringing I could I could wish for. Right, so I'm doing a bit of wood grain with the sepia. This is the point one. Um, if I'm gonna, um, yeah, this is it, Diane. We we take it for granted. And my granddad, my granddad died when I was twenty twenty one, I think, maybe twenty one, twenty two. And um, he was always talking about when he was in the RAF and he was a featherweight wrestler and he did all of these things. And I didn't, I really didn't want to know and I feel so bad because I really didn't care. And now I really care and I can't chat to him. Fortunately, um, my grandfather, oh yeah, thank you, sorry, I'd, I'd forgotten I was um, zoomed in. Um, fortunately, my, um, my granddad used to write to the Black Country Bugle nearly every couple of weeks, and he made it into the Black Country Bugle Annual in um, 1999 um, or something like that. And uh, he did, uh, he, he wrote all about his, his youth in um, in Pensnet or Commonside. You'll know where that is, Eileen, probably. Um, and uh, all the things he used to do and how poor they were. So I'm just doing the wood grain. And I'm doing a few swoopy uppy downy loops. So I want you to see what it looks like without the black around it. Just the brown on its own. There wouldn't really be as many knots as I've put in because they wouldn't be able to work with them. But you sort of want to really create texture. I mean you might have a few little blemishes and dimples. Yeah. 
my mum used to help out at art in 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 the school um where i was at when i was a child so and then i worked in schools teaching art it's 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 a passion for sure don't get any money but it's it's a nice thing to do it's amazing isn't it when things just randomly come out and they share things and you're kind of like blown away sometimes aren't you so there you go let me i'll just zoom in really tightly on that wood grain so you can see what it looks like and you want me to do the tiles well you see my mom was the family historian kind of thing and I'm, I, I used to listen to my mum a lot about all the stories and who's who and what's what. But now she's gone. There's nobody else to ask. So I'm having to try and research myself. Um, and it, it's so easy to go wrong. Right, so I'll just do a few tiles. And the uh, this is an old building, so it's, it's a wooden beam rather than the fascias. Um, so we're going to go in... A little bit like um, we would with the brickwork. I'm, I've gone a bit, gone a bit wonky. Oh, that's a what's that noise? Oh, it's the paper on my uh, my mapping pin holding the board up. I've given it a little bit of a bumpy thickness, so we know we're looking up at it. It will sort of be a bit like the brickwork or stonework. I do have a habit that I don't, um, I don't shut up, do I? I was saying that in the class yesterday. I learnt from my mother that um, there's never an awkward silence. Yes, I'm going to do this woodwork in black so you can see what that looks like. So um, there is never an awkward silence with my mom, um, and I've I've inherited that trait. We can we can fill an awkward silence with with something. It's usually not what anybody wants, but at least it's not awkward silence. Sometimes it's just awkward conversation. This pen is the uni pin liner fine line. I've got a link. If you um if you scroll up um Yolanda in the comments, you'll see there's a link to our site for them. Um we don't charge postage and packaging and um there's no minimum order. So you can order away and we'll uh, Monday morning we'll get into the uh, into the shop, print off the orders, and uh, post it off. And you'll probably get it by Tuesday or Wednesday. If you, it's free postage to mainland UK anyway, so if you're mainland UK, you can. But the the Unipin fine liners can. Um, excuse my bongs. Uh, you can pick them up everywhere. In, in, in most countries they're a really popular brand so I'm just going to do a little bit of a, a hash uh, a cross hatch so it really depends if you wanted to go as a, if it was a strong shadow ah oh, Krista you'll make me blush if there was a really strong shadow I'd go Cross one way, hatch the other. Keep it sort of random. And then I'm going horizontally right underneath. Can you see how that depth depth deepens? My words won't work today. Oh, thank you, Rosemary. Oh, um, Hang on a minute. I'll pop it in again. I mean, if you've enjoyed the demo, you can always um, pop on and, and 
pay Palos a couple of quid. Keep me in, uh, keep me in biscuits. Yeah, um, I don't know if you can rewind the video while it's live. I'm not sure. I don't know how that works. Um, but I'm finishing in a second, so um, within two minutes of me stopping the video, you can um, watch it all again right from the very beginning. Right, so that's the tiles with the wood beam. Now this wood is done in black pen. So it's very different. So we've used the black pen, the brown, the sepia pen, and the dark grey. So let me zoom out a little bit so you can now see the whole idea of the image. And you can really see um, the different textures. So um, somebody did ask, do you just rub it out the lines when you're finished? Yes, you do. So I'll just rub out this section and you can see how much clearer the picture is. You should wait for it to dry a lot longer than I've just done that. But fortunately, it was okay. Sort of like that. So I could um, I could put a watercolour wash on, and, and that was what was in my head. Um, so I might I might fiddle about. If I do have a spare hour or two while I'm watching some rubbish on telly, I might just carry on with this, um, just so you can see what it would look like finished. Yes, I will. Um, if I want to focus on just this section, I won't. So what I will do is I will do the pen work sort of here. And then I might switch to a grey pen or do fewer lines as it gets further out. So the concentration is this section here. Um, and then you can create your own sort of vignette um, of work with a focus and then fade it out. Or if if you need to, um, if, you, if you're working with a watercolour wash, all you need to do is do this bit in pen, if that's your focal, do your watercolour wash, but all the other bits just do in watercolour without the pen. And it will soften it. So in, in straight away, your focal area will be whatever it, whether it is just the window and the plant pot um, in pen. I might do a little play around with it because um, you've all been so keen. Um, yeah. You see, the pot I would do in um, in the sepia. And there'll be a little bit of hatching underneath the, the rim. Now, this is bracelet shading. See, I, I can't shut up, can I? Honestly. Bracelet shading is the same as hatching, but you curve it around. And by going quicker, you take the pressure off a little bit. Because if I'm very quick with it, I can tint the whole picture of the pot in a very, very pale grey. So this is the same pen, I'm not doing anything else with it. But you can see that um, I'm managing to get it a little bit darker here. And then, and then, what I'd have to do is
but a shadow on the floor from it. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed yourself this morning. It's been lovely to have your company. Next month, the free demo is... Da -da -da -da. Let me have a look. I'm going to do a landscape. Good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it, um, Emma, Jean and Wendy and Jilly. Um, I'm doing a landscape in oils with an acrylic underpainting on the 6th of March at 11 o'clock. So... Um, I will have already done the acrylic underpainting and then I'll do the oils on top so you can see how you can combine the two. I might use Alkids or water mixable oils. Uh, depends if I'm doing it here or there. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely have a look at this again as many times as you want forever and a day. I might, um, as soon as I've finished, I might upload it to uh, YouTube and then put it on our website as well under our learning zone. Uh, so we've got lots of things coming up. Um, so the, the free class is in the 6th of March. But coming up this week, we've got watercolours, we've got acrylics, we've got drawing, and we've got calligraphy next Saturday doing Car Carolingian script. Um, so all of those are in our £5 lessons. But thank you so, so much for your company today. I've really enjoyed having a chat with you. And hopefully you've uh, you've learned a lot. So thank Oh, thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Janet. Um, thank you, Jill. Um, thank you, Lynn. So I'm going to I'm going to go now. I probably will fiddle with this for a little bit more today because um, what else is there to do? Um, so take care. Have a wonderful weekend. And um, the sun, the, the mist has gone from here and the sun is out. So it's a, it's looking like a nice day. Oh, thank you, Lorna. Um, yeah. Wake your daughter up and um, and tell her to watch. Right, thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.